Look, we always do things traditionally with respect and that's what it is. But today we're trying something a little bit different. Obviously you care about ramen, but what about your holiday gifts? Might be cutting a little close if you're getting one still. Might I recommend my book, which is 50% off on Amazon and the link's in the description. Thank you so much. You'll enjoy it, you'll love it. It's full of great delicious recipes. Look at that. 50% off. Ramen is already one of my favorite foods and arguably one of the greatest, right? There's not many things out there like it. There's gotta be a way to diversify it. What if I take some of our most favorite foods, put them together and fuse it with ramen? No, it's not fusion. This is not just for science. I wanna create new flavors, something that's never existed before. Or maybe it has existed, but I wanna taste it. I wanna feel it. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Listen, I read the comments, I see all your wild requests, I know you guys want more deep dive recipes. Prepare yourself for this one because this is arguably one of our biggest applications of what I call technique blending. We got a miso Siberia ramen, Cajun gumbo tonkotsu, and butter chicken sukumen. My knees are trembling just thinking of the luscious concoctions that will come out of this. And for the record, we have many traditional ramens, so please understand that these untraditional ones are experimental. That's for the comment section. Now, listen up. Before we even start, every single one of these three recipes will have four crucial ingredients. Yes, you will need straight ramen noodles. Most Asian stores have them, but you can also get the ones that I used in the link in the description. So essentially, you'll just boil those following the package directions after your broth is done, and you'll need about half a pound per recipe. Then you need four soft boiled eggs. Look, calm down. You literally just boil the eggs for six minutes, ice bath them, and well, that's it. Perfect soft boiled eggs every time. And for the tare, each bowl will simply receive a splash of shiradashi and soy sauce. That's it. Now, it's time. First, birria miso ramen. To make the broth, after all, ramen is only as good as its broth. First, you need one pound or 450 grams of boneless chuck roast, three large short ribs with their bone, and one pound or 450 grams of oxtail. Heat a large seven to eight quart pot over medium high with just enough oil to coat the bottom evenly. Patch your meat dry with a paper towel, season generously with salt and pepper, then in batches, sear those bad boys for two to three minutes per side. So each Oh, lovely, is browned beautifully from edge to edge. Color is flavor. Now, once those all are seared, you'll make a quick sachet using a piece of cheesecloth, which will be filled with one cinnamon stick, four bay leaves, one tablespoon or 12 grams of black peppercorns, one tablespoon or six grams of coriander seeds, and half a cup or 11 grams of bonito flakes. Wrap that up nice and tie it tightly with kitchen twine like so, and make sure it is closed. Now, back to your pot. Set to medium heat, add additional oil to coat the bottom, and then add in two tablespoons or 40 grams of tomato paste. Cook that down for about a minute, then add four green onions, cut into one to two inch segments, and six cloves of whole garlic, and a one inch knob of ginger that's been thinly sliced. Add in your beef plus your sachet, then add three quarts or 2.8 liters of beef stock, bring that up to a boil over medium high, then immediately reduce that to a simmer. From there, add in a mixture of five guajillo chilies, five ancho chilies, two chilies to arbol, then optionally cover with a lid or a cartouche and simmer for three hours. Beautiful things take time, all right? Just be patient. Now, once that's done, remove all of your beef carefully because it's tender. Place in a bowl, and while it's cooling, carefully remove your rehydrated chilies, add to a blender along with two cups or 480 milliliters of your broth and three quarters of a cup or 181 grams of white miso, then just blend on high until as smooth as possible. Stir that into your broth, season it takes with salt and the broth is done. Now for your beef in that bowl, first off, let's take a moment to thank the editor for what they're about to do. Please set the mood. Beef this tender should just be against the law. It makes one do bad things. Now, shred your beef along with its own fat as finely as you can, season to taste with salt, and keep warm to the side. Now, to assemble, first a light splash of shiradashi, followed by a splash of soy sauce, ladle in a few ladlebowls of your broth, followed by a quarter of your cooked noodles, top with a light drizzle of toasted sesame oil, a generous handful of your shredded beef, sweet onion that's been thinly sliced and rinsed under water, just helps make them a little nicer, a soft boiled egg half, fresh cilantro, a lime wedge or a cheek, up, 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 something to really wind this up. Get a corn tortilla, dip it in the birria broth, set it in a hot pan, add some fresh torn Oaxaca cheese to one side. Let it cook for about 15 to 20 seconds, fold it together, flip it, and cook until the cheese is melted. Then you simply insert your birria quesadilla right where you'd put some nori strips. But if you think that's wild, then wait till you see the butter chicken sukumen. Now, moving on. For the butter chicken sukumen, you're going to start with an MSG garlic fat bomb. So, medium sized bowl, one cup or 225 grams of softened salted butter, one teaspoon or six grams of MSG, two teaspoons or six grams of smoked paprika, and two cloves of garlic grated. Whisk together vigorously until thoroughly combined, roll up a sheet of plastic wrap, and tighten by rolling and pinching the sides against the countertop to form a doit log. Chill in the fridge. And now for the grilled chicken. In a medium sized bowl, add five boneless and skinless chicken thighs. Please, not breasts. Just don't do that to me right now, okay? I don't deserve that. Half a cup or 110 grams of whole fat yogurt, one inch knob of ginger grated, one teaspoon or three grams of turmeric powder, one teaspoon or two grams of garam masala, two teaspoons or eight grams of cashmere chili powder, one teaspoon or five grams of fine sea salt, half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cumin. Mix it together by hand until evenly distributed and thoroughly coated. Now just let that sit while you prep everything else. For the sauce, coat the bottom of a large saucepan with three tablespoons or 42 grams of vegetable oil. Add in one yellow onion, rough chopped 
chopped, five cloves of garlic, thinly sliced, and one knob of ginger grated or sliced. Gonna get blended anyway. Season to taste with salt and saute for five minutes or until the vegetables start to soften nicely. Then add two teaspoons or five grams of garam masala, half a teaspoon or one gram of coriander powder, two teaspoons or six grams of ground cumin, one teaspoon or four grams of cashmere chili powder, one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. Now saute all of that till fragrant and toasty smelling. About 30 seconds. Then pour in a 14 ounce or 400 gram tin of crushed tomatoes. Follow that with a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of chicken broth and a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of shiradashi. Half a gram of fenugreek leaves, a third cup or 80 milliliters of water, then just bring them to a simmer over medium heat, reduce the heat to low, and let that reduce for five to eight minutes or until it begins to thicken. Pour into a blender and blend on high speed until as smooth as possible. Now, add that back to the pan, keep it warm. Then add one cup or 240 milliliters of heavy whipping cream, mix together till homogenous, season to taste with salt, and you know, a little extra shiradashi if necessary. And then just reduce that over medium low heat for five minutes and keep warm. Chicken simple, either get a grill or in this case, you can use a grill pan, that's totally fine. Grease up your grates, set over medium high heat, add your chicken in, sear your chicken, flipping off until the chicken is cooked through to an internal temperature of 165, around five to eight minutes total. And you have some nice char marks. Now, how in the world do you serve this sacrilegious sukumen? Well, first, ladle your broth into a ramekin or bowl. Make sure it's hot because we're going to top it with a fresh sliced coin of your MSG butter. Then beautifully let it melt in there. And separately on a plate, you can arrange your cooked straight ramen noodles, your grilled chicken, which has been sliced, a soft boiled egg or two, and a nice handful of fresh cilantro. Now moving on to our last and arguably my favorite, gumbo tonkotsu. Now that's a set of words right there, brother. This one's actually relatively simple with a technique that many restaurants use to get that cream. First, you need a large stock pot, add in two pounds or 900 grams of pork neck bones and two and a half pounds or 1.1 kilo of pork hocks. That's hocks, okay? Get your mind out of the gutter. Cover that with cold water and set it on the stove over medium high and bring that cauldron of pork to a boil. Skim any scum off that rises to the top. Once that comes to a boil, immediately cut off the heat, strain, and rinse those bones generously with cold water. Now, here's the secret to tonkotsu style broth that doesn't take, you know, 12 hours of nonstop boiling. First, you need a pressure cooker. Add in your bones, one 14 ounce or 400 gram can of crushed tomatoes that have ideally been blended into as smooth as possible puree. Three tablespoons or 30 grams of hot sauce, three tablespoons or 33 grams of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons or 27 grams of your Cajun seasoning of choice, two tablespoons or 10 grams of smoked paprika, and one tablespoon or eight grams of Handashi. Then just add water up to the fill line in your pressure cooker and pressure cook that on high for one and a half hours. Then add one pound or 450 grams of andouille sausage, two ribs of celery, rough chopped, one bunch of green onions cut into one inch segments, and half a pound or 226 grams of pork fat back, pop that lid back on, in high pressure for another one and a half hours. Now, while that's going, we're going to make a Cajun style chili oil. First, fill a small sauce pot with two cups or 220 grams of vegetable oil. Then add one cinnamon stick, five star anus, four bay leaves, two to four cloves of garlic, two and a half tablespoons or 10 grams of Sichuan peppercorns, two shallots quartered, two green onions cut into one inch segments. Heat that up and hold it at 220 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes to infuse. Then in a separate bowl, add one cup or 122 grams of Sichuan chili flakes. Then simply strain your hot oil into your chili flake and stir in half a teaspoon or three grams of MSG, two and a half tablespoons or 32 grams of Cajun spice. Just make sure your Cajun spice has salt in it because that's going to season your chili oil. And one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. Stir it till thoroughly combined, let that cool completely, and you have a beautiful chili oil. Once your second boil of your tonkatsu gumbo is done, carefully transfer all the pork fat back into the blender. It's gonna be really soft, so be gentle here, along with two cups of broth, then strain the remainder of your broth into a stock pot. Now pop that blender on high and blend until it's creamy and emulsified as possible. Pour your emulsified broth into your pot of the rest of the broth. Bring it to a boil over medium high, reduce the medium, and let that simmer aggressively for five minutes. Then finally, add in half a pound or 225 grams of peeled and deveined shrimp, cooked for five more minutes and it's done. Now, we just put it together. Again, bowl, little splash of shiradashi, little splash of soy sauce, ladling your creamy, smoky broth as desired, followed by your cooked noodles. Optionally, you can sear a split sausage in half, you know, for the look and the vibe. Followed by fresh sliced green onion, a soft boiled egg, your chili oil drizzled generously, some nice strips of nori, which are a little bit more traditional. And of course, be sure to grab some of your freshly cooked shrimp and look at this baby. Enough talk, let's taste test. This feels sacrilegious and yet feels beautiful at the same time. I don't know how to feel, what to say, so I'm gonna eat. The funny thing is it smells like gumbo. <laughs> Incredible gumbo, tonkotsu ramen, put them together, and this is their child. Moving on, birria ramen. This is pretty much a birria consomme with Japanese ingredients and miso. Mm. Wow. Unbelievably delicious. I could eat this every day. It feels very much like a Mexican dish, but I don't have a problem with that, and it's got noodles in it, so, you know, there's some balance there. You know, we could have stopped there. Could have just done another regular old bowl of ramen. But I went for sukumen, also known as the dipping ramen. So I thought, well, what are we gonna get that's thicker than tonkotsu? Uh, Butter chicken, dunk, put the noodles in here. I'll add a little bit of green onion. Look, all of these are incredible. As a sukumen, this is like top tier. This is like ridiculous. Now for the voting round. And the winner goes to 
three new things that never existed before. Add them to your repertoire and change your life forever. But you wanna know what else will change your life forever? B-roll.